Greetings, salutations, welcome to Strike Reviews. Uh, I haven't done one of these in uh, like a week and a half, and I do apologize about that, but I got really horribly sick. I rarely get sick, but it, the few times I do, it's it's the freaking outbreak virus. I'm, I'm down. I'm just done. So, um, I did, however, as you may have noticed, I'm not going to be fucking around with my hair quite so much because it's not uncomfortable anymore. Uh, what happened is I hacked off a lock of my hair and donated it to and donated it to charity for because I had over a foot of hair going down the back. So figure it's a it goes to a good cause. And so now I have been watching wrestling because that doesn't take too much. That's me laying on the couch trying not to fall asleep. Um Nothing to do with whether the match is boring or not, unfortunately. I'm just one of those people. If I'm in a position and I'm comfortable and not doing anything, I'm, I'm able to fall asleep. I, I will sack the fuck out. If I'm comfortable and my feet aren't cold, I can now. <laughs> so, Fastlane is the new pay-per-view. <coughs> And it is essentially replacing the Elimination Chamber. Don't know if that's permanent or if they're just, you know, leaving it off this year because they really didn't have a good setup for an Elimination Chamber match. But, eh. So, I don't know. I think they could have done an Elimination Chamber. They unfortunately, didn't really have a good main event one. Uh, now, the trick here, uh, Fastlane, Fastlane is a night of anticlimax. Now, to have a discussion about this, we have to have two discussions, basically. Uh, the first one is about suspension of disbelief. Huge spoilers. <laughs> Yeah, I'm gonna, it's, it should go without saying, since I'm going to be going over the the review, to the review of the whole thing, there will be spoilers. I'm going to spoil every match. Yeah. Now, it's worth watching, but it's it's going to be kind of a tough watch uh, until, the, until, the, until the main event. Um, it'll start out all right, but it's going to you know, strain your patience as it goes. Okay. So, suspension of disbelief. Wrestling is fake. So is Cheers. Nash. The Avengers. Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. Once upon a time. Once upon a time in Wonderland. <laughs> it's fake. But we still care. Uh, movies like the Grand Budapest Hotel or whatever, they're fake. They're not real. Even if you're watching something based on real events, it's still dramatized. So it's still partially fake. And so how? So this encounters what we call suspension of disbelief. Now suspension of disbelief goes for both is held in the realm of two people of two groups. The audience for the initial bid. And what do I mean by that? Well, okay. Let's say you're going to go watch Zombieland. There are a few things you are essentially signing off on. Woody Harrelson's a redneck. <laughs> uh, the kid from the social network is going to be our main protagonist and you are accepting zombies. You have to accept these things or there's no point in the movie. You, nothing the movie does is going to matter because you haven't accepted those basic concepts. And this is where it really kind of sets up is now I, I mentioned two groups because you know while the audience does have to sign off on the initial part of it that's their area. That's, that's you know, 
So if I go in to watch the Avengers, I'm signing off on superheroes. I have to sign off on superheroes because otherwise I'm just going to be calling bull rampant bullshit all fucking movie. You know, it's just like two and a half hours of fucking, oh, rampant bullshit. That doesn't work like that. You know, that's Chris Hemsworth. He's not an Asgardian god. I mean, he's cool and all, but he's not an Asgardian god. He's not a thousand years old. <laughs> you know, it's, and see, that's the problem. And so, in wrestling, now, it's easier in Avengers because really once every couple of years you have to you know do the suspension disbelief thing suspension disbelief in something like wrestling is actually really fucking difficult because when you come down to it um it's every week and it's not only every week it's two or three times a week because you've got raw smackdown and main event yeah and that's not even including Superstars, which is one that's just available on WWE Network. But yeah, so four times a week, they have to establish and maintain suspension of disbelief. And every week, period, 52 weeks a year, there is no off-season for the WWE. So WrestleMania is sort of the uh, finale of the year, which is what we're building up toward. So, this is the point where the last playing pieces are getting into place. And so, the other half of suspension of disbelief is on the writers. The writers and the director. The writer, director, actors. Basically, the people that are doing this. You have to... Well, we've signed off. Now, you need to show us stuff that keeps it going. So, you'll hear people talk about, you know, um, you know, when you talk about some of the really great matches, you'll hear people, like, they're starting to blur the line between the, the real, what's really going on in the back and what's going on in front of us. Now, it could all be scripted, but the more it the two intersect when you hear people you know talking about it like oh shit i think now i know wrestling's fake but yeah no this has got to be legit on some level um <coughs> now cm the, the this is where cm punk fucking reigns supreme because he would bring his issues with wrestling into the wrestling ring <laughs> He famous for what was called a pipe bomb, and he now disparages the point of, oh, God, now everybody uses it. This just, oh, God, they use it for everything. Oh, it's a pipe bomb. It's a pipe bomb. No, it's not. It's like the only other person who has actually legitimately dropped a pipe bomb was A.J. Lee, who, ironically enough, is CM Punk's wife in real life. Because uh, she walks out and is basically fucking, as uh, was, was a while back, she walks out, they're getting ready to start up Total Divas, and so they have the Divas that are going to be starring in it out at the ring, you know, showing off and standing there and looking pretty, and AJ comes out and she just goes off on sort of a rant, and she just goes on a run, verbal run, she just comes out. Uh, and when she comes out, everybody's booing because she's healed the shit and gone at this point. And she starts talking, and she's just, she lays right into a lot of them. Yeah. You, what I see when I look at you, look at you is a bunch of plastic, useless women. I have done more in the last year than all of you have done in your entire collective careers. And here's the problem. Nobody has an argument for that point. <laughs> it's like when the villain sits there, comes out, and he's throwing the monologue, and you're like, you know, <laughs> fair cop, he's got a point. <laughs> so, like, it, you see Magneto do that one a lot, where... Uh, 
he's like, you know, they're going to come for us eventually. You know this. They're not going to quietly retire into the shadows. They're not going to go quietly into the night. They're going to try to kill us. And Mags is right. He's 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 correct. That prejudice is going to be there. Um. So what what ends up happening? So. So, so AJ sells this thing really well in this case. She is kicking ass at it. And it's important that she does. Why? Because in doing so, you legitimize her as a threat and you set up, you can set up so many things off of that speech. So many people that just want to tear the hide off of her. You know, it's and that works. Um, but then you have things like uh, one one thing they're trying to sell us is right now that's not working so well is uh, they've got Eric Rowan. He was part of the Wyatt family. He was the quiet psychopath of the of the group. And now they're trying to sell him as oh he's got a genius IQ and. He owns a vineyard. <laughs> and you're just like, no. You just, no. Yeah, we have no suspension of disbelief for this. We might like to see him wrestle, but that's not a statement. That's not suspension of disbelief. We just want to see him wrestle. Um, and this is where you know, they're sort of you see what I'm saying so suspension of disbelief um, WWE has is been having a lot of trouble with that of late um, a lot of their plots have been very transparent but I mean that's not even necessarily a problem because we knew in the Avengers we knew they weren't going to lose we were, <laughs> were like yeah they're not going to lose okay we, we know this we're signing off on it <laughs> <laughs> We'd actually have been shocked as shit if the if the invasion of New York succeeded. They you know, Chitauri invasion. They just fucking won. What? No. <laughs> Wait, they can't win. <laughs> Could you imagine that? God, the backlash. <coughs> but what ends up happening? But you, but you see what I mean. We know what the outcomes go, what the essential outcomes going to be. But a few points. We know it's a Joss Whedon flick, so there's a very good chance he'll kill somebody off. You know, it could only be made more poignant by the fact of George R. R. Martin writing it. In which case, we're just like, oh god, oh god, he could kill them all. Oh god, <laughs> Loki fucking wins. Loki betrays Thanos, kills him, claims the Infinity Stones. <laughs> Son of a bitch! But it's it's a thing that has to happen. Is whenever you set up something like this, you have to have that suspension of disbelief. We have to be willing to sign off on it. We have to be willing to sign off on it. And you need to show us why we signed off on it. So, um, next, we come to a special word in writing called an anticlimax. Uh, now, an anticlimax can be used in series, and it can be used to good effect. Um, you know, you're expecting a win, but you're expecting a win for the hero. You're, you're all geared up for it. Things are starting to build, and then it just gets cut flat by something. Maybe something, you know, coming from off camera. Maybe the bad guy pulls a quick trick and, you know, gets out of there. Now, you see this in wrestling matches when they do a small package win. Or, you know, they grab the tights suddenly in the middle of the match and succeed in getting their opponent out of the match. Is it getting out of the match? Um, <clears throat> so, here we essentially have 
we essentially, you know, really do have a point where these things come into play here. So we've got a few things that are going on. So, suspension of disbelief. We know Reigns is pretty much going to win the main event. We, we pretty much know this. I mean, there's a tiny chance they'll hand it to Brian, but this really isn't the best route, and it would end up hurting Reigns. It would end up hurting Reigns, and a loss isn't going to hurt Brian, as long as the match is good. Um, and that's, you know, we know. We're, we're in on this to a very good extent. And that makes the trick more interesting because it has to be a good enough it has to be a good enough match to legitimize Reigns, especially because we're already pissed about that lackluster crap at the Royal Rumble where it was clear and obvious Reigns just had that shit handed to him. Um, going back to my Avengers references because I, everyone pretty much knows it. Imagine the Chitauri just started slitting their own throats at a certain point in the fight, just like, yeah, fuck it. Ha, huh, you can't kill me, asshole. You know, or lining themselves up to be destroyed. You would, it would feel, you know, like, clearly and obviously, you would feel that, you know, this was, this was shit. This is, this is fucking boring. And you'd be right, because it really fucking is. When you know exactly what's going to happen... See, like, with Magic Trick, the whole idea is that, you know, they're going to make this person disappear, and you know they're going to do it, but it's figuring out how... It's the sheer fact that they did it right in front of you that is the amazing point. That you were right there, you saw everything... And they, they fucking got it. <laughs> so what happens? So this night there was a lot of anticlimax. Um, it, it, it ends up working out, but there were so many points where like the match is building up. We're, we're starting to really get, get on a roll here, and it's looking really, it's starting to look cool. Could have gone to a four-star or a five-star match, and... They just, they just fuck it. They just, and it's done. What? Wait, what? What happened? Where's the rest of the match? You're just screwed. And it's just like, oh god, this is so fucking depressing. <laughs> it, it's just, it really does get depressing, because when you come down to it. Now usually I would do the kick uh, the kickoff show review, but there wasn't really a match during that. Uh, Heyman talked up the mat. There was more tension with Miz and Miz Dow. Heyman talked up the impending match between either Brian or Reigns. Nothing huge. It, it, good spots. Good spots. Um, yeah, I still recommend watching the kickoff show. A lot of the commentary is really fun. The mat usually the kickoff show match isn't doesn't have much stakes to it. It's just kind of there. <laughs> but <clears throat> so today we want for fast lane we want straight into a match that has no stakes and is boring. It is kind of like <sighs> it's <laughs> which is the six man tag match between. The Big Show, Kane, and Seth Rollins versus Dolph Ziggler, Ryback, and Eric Rowan. So, it ends up being a good match because they can all put in a good performance. But, there's again, there's just no stakes here. There's nothing driving that extra edge to it. It's good. It's not... It's good. It's not great. It's not amazing. It is a three star. It's it's a three star match. Um. You know, if they'd had something really batshit happen, like you know, uh, you know, for some reason Eric gets taken out of the match entirely, and we're coming down to Ryback and freaking, 
you know, if they've made it a no DQ and it's coming or an elimination match where it just ends up going horribly against our heroes or even goes horribly against the authority to where like J and J get bounced and the show goes down to Rowan and Kane gets taken out by Ziggler. And then, you know, Seth is looking at a reverse of Survivor Series and pulls out a win. That would have been fucking amazing. <laughs> but that doesn't happen. It just, it just fucking doesn't. Um, the, but then, this is also not about the wrestling. This is about setting up a match for, for WrestleMania. Um, so what ends up happening is that uh, Ryback, Ziggler, and Rowan end up getting a DQ win because the authority cheats like mother. <laughs> no, wait. No, Show gets the knockout, uh, goes for cheat, knocks out Ziggler in the corner, which was kind of bullshit because... Ziggler's fucking owning Kane, but Kane just pulls him down. He can't see. He's looking off this way. So he can't see where Sho is, but pulls him into perfect position for Sho to do a knockout punch on Ziggler. And then he makes it look like he did a powerbomb and puts, uh, d gets the pin on Ziggler in the end. It, it was a good match. Everybody got to, everybody got to play their part. <sighs> It's a good match. It, it is, but it's just... The setup's old. You're not adding anything new here until... What ends up happening is... And the crowd knows this is coming. You can tell because they start chanting. They're calling for him. And he will show up in a moment. So, the bad guys start beating the shit out of good guys post-match. Yeah, we got the win, but fuck it. We're still going to be, be, be continue beating the man shit out of you. Um, and they succeed in basically beating the shit out of everyone, and then Randy Orton's music hits. Randy Orton has been out for a number of months after Seth curb stomped him into the Money in the Bank briefcase due to injury. Here's the thing about Orton. That is a vengeful motherfucker. Like, if you're on his team and you even accidentally hit him, you're getting RKO'd. Period. You are getting RKO'd. Um, so he starts going in to kick ass, and, you know, he throws... He RKO's both both J&J. &J, he RKO's freaking Kane. He's kicking the crap out of the show. <laughs> And Seth runs like a bitch. He's just like... They like literally show him running all the way out into the parking lot, just fleeing as fast as he can. Because <laughs> he knows Orton does not have that little thing that says, well, he's fled the ring. Oh, well, guess he's safe for now. <sighs> nope. He has beat people in a parking lot before. <laughs> it's like, dude, you need to get to your car. And you need to drive away now. Um, <laughs> Seth knows Orton's coming for him. That's so. This sets up. Uh, this sets up a Seth versus. This sets up, of course, Seth versus Orton for WrestleMania, which is going to be a good match. It's a good match for Seth, and it's a good match for Randy. Um. And then uh, we get a promo with Gold and Stardust, uh, the run-up for they've been having problems between the brothers, and Stardust has turned on Gold Dust and is saying he's not Cody Rhodes anymore, that Cody is dead, and Gold Dust and, and Dusty Rhodes are dead to him. He's, he's kind of fallen in... Basically, they really are playing it as he's fallen into his art, to his alter ego, and he's starting to buy the bullshit. <laughs> so Goldie goes out to fight him, and this is where we start having that discussion about the anticlimax. <laughs> the 
like it happened in the first match because it, it it was looking really interesting, and then I was just like, yeah, and you're done. Okay, moving on. <laughs> um, second match, another anticlimax end. Uh, oddly enough, this one in favor of the face. <laughs> Cody and Goldust are fighting back and forth. They're battling, and um, Goldie Gold doesn't it, Goldust does not hit his finisher. He doesn't. Uh, there was actually a really good match here. Now it's a good again. It's a good match. And what ends up happening is the the crowd starts chanting Cody. Cody, Cody, and so when that happens, Stardust starts freaking out, and he's just, he's so pissed, and it's like, no, no, as, as people are calling for Cody, Goldust is fucking stalking him through this match, it was, it was really Goldie's game, like, you could tell Goldust was the one in control, and Stardust is the one who's losing his shit, um, and what ends up happening is there comes this point where there's a slam pin by Gold Dust. And this is the thing you see people kick out of all the time. Only Cody doesn't hit it quite in time. So the ref calls it because he hit his third count. And so the match gets called, Gold Dust wins. And you see this uh, moment where you see Goldust reaching out to, he's reaching out to Cody. Cody sort of shakes his hand for a moment, then, but rolls out of the ring, and he's just, he has this very shell shocked look on his face at the loss. Um, <clears throat> and then we so. Apparently, they're going to be coming back for this. Uh, this was, again, three-star match. A very good match. They were. Uh, this is two, bro two actual real-life brothers who have been wrestling for the majority of their lives uh, and even you know, training with one another and being tag team partners. This is very well done because they know each other's moves exactly and they play on that in this fight where it's like, no, you're not getting that cheap-ass shit on me. You're just not. I, I, I didn't even scout you. Bitch, I know that move. <laughs> I do a variant of it myself. <laughs> it's kind of like if you had a fight between Bruce Lee and Jackie Chan, because Jackie Chan was stunt double to Bruce Lee. Yeah. <laughs> they know where this is. I know where you're going, asshole. <laughs> so, the... So, what happens... So what ends up happening, yeah, like I said, Goldust wins. Cody slowly walks off. He slides out of the ring. He walks off, uh, very shell shocked. His this you know bubble reality that he's created for himself is trying to implode, and you know people keep ch chanting for Cody, which he did the Stardust thing to get away from the Cody Rhodes angle. <laughs> So backstage, you see Goldust and Dusty talking about it, and you know um, Goldust is feeling somewhat hopeful when here comes Stardust talking about, oh look, a family reunion, and nobody invited Stardust, and. Starts yelling, uh, gets into an actual fight, beats the shit out of Gold Dust, threatens Dusty. Uh, it really goes the whole nine. This had to be really hard to sell for Cody because he he's really got to say like, I want you to say like the most horrible thing to your actual real life father that you can come up with, and you've got to say it with the utmost vehemence. Oh yeah, and you gotta do it to your brother too, and you gotta kick his ass. <laughs> you gotta throw him a totally unfair beating. 
Well, okay. So, suspension of disbelief is very well achieved. It's Cody's playing it really well. Is the you know he's lost inside his mind. He's lost inside his own creation, basically. Um, so again, good match, three star. It it was good. It didn't get to great because of the way it ended. Basically, the end of the match was just. It just, it, it fell so flat. It, and we have the tag titles are on the line. It's the Usos, the tag champions, versus Kim Cesaro. God, a lot of anti-climax. <laughs> um, yeah, they did this, like, a lot tonight. Like, seriously, this is, this is going to be a thing. Um, you know, I'm gearing up because, like, both teams have really great workers and do all these really amazing moves. And so I'm, like, I'm really expecting sort of this epic battle to take place. You know, it's just like a fucking war. No matter who comes out of it, you know, it's going to be, it's going to be an absolute, like, it's going to be in the ring. It's going to be out of the ring. It's going to go all the way around it. You're going to see Natalia and Naomi getting into it because they're at ringside. And you're going to see, you know, all this stuff going down. <laughs> that doesn't happen. Um, it's good. They they use a good number of their moves. Uh, but there's a quick roll-up pin by Kid. Right as it's really starting to get its momentum, they called it. Basically, they just were like, yeah, and done. What? We're... We're done? Come on, this is your first time doing fast lane. What's all with all these fucking shit wins? I... Yeah, um... So, Kid and Cesaro get the... We didn't get to see Cesaro throw anyone in the air and do a European uppercut. We didn't get to see him do a giant swing. We didn't get to see him do... Oh, God. I... His, we saw like nothing of Cesaro's move set, and he, he, what the fuck, guys? I mean, how do you fuck that up? Oh God! It's, it's, it was like it was going good up till then. It was a good match, right until you went through and just sort of cut the legs out from under it. It was like, and we're done. Eh? We didn't get to see shit from Cesaro, really. I mean, yeah, he was in the ring and he did things, but where was where was this great athleticism and insane strength where, like, he throws guys into the air and then European uppercuts them on the way down? Yeah, no, that's a thing that he does. But not in this match. Not on this pay-per-view? Really? You're trying to establish these guys as being a fucking dominant threat, so you cut down their moveset? What the fuck, guys? What the fuck? And so, yeah, it's three stars, but it's... This is why I was talking about it being hard... Getting hard to watch. Um, because it's really just anti-climax. 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 So, they do a quick rehash for people who have not been watching of the run-up between Hunter and Sting. And next we get the Hunter confronting Sting. This goes to four stars. Thank you, Christ, for not fucking this one up. <laughs> thank you, Jesus. And thank you, Tom Cruise. Okay, so... <laughs> Hunter comes out. He comes out jeans, t-shirt, leather jacket. And he gets in the ring. Calls Sting out again. <laughs> and Sting shows up. This time, opting to come down the ramp as opposed to appear in the ring out of fucking nowhere. <laughs> he shows up. 
Sting says absolutely nothing in this entire fucking segment. And props to him for that. Having him talk would have just kind of ruined the effect. He's just there staring menacingly. Like, oh no, I just want this fight. That's just this hardened stare that, that he has perfected through the years. And so Hunter talks a lot and <clears throat> offers him an out clause. And he's like, or we can do this the other way. Which is a clear reference that, you know, the, or we can end this with your ass whipping. And I'm like, other way, other way. Because, <laughs> hey, let's be honest, we want to see him fight. So, Homer pops out of the ring, goes under the apron, and pulls out his signature sledgehammer, and hops back in the ring while Sting is down. Because he hands up sort of getting into a scuffle with Sting. And for a bit, you think Sting's just going to eat this one. And, uh... While he's laying on the ground, Hunter pops out to go get the sledgehammer. He pops back in, and by the time he gets to Sting, Sting has a black baseball bat to his neck. It was like, and Hunter's like, okay, forgot about the bat. <laughs> and they don't show how he got the bat, so it could have been under the thing. Like, you know, he was carrying the bat Highlander style. Or uh, it could have been under the apron or somebody passed it to him. We don't know. We just know he suddenly he has a black baseball bat. And he has used this thing with extreme amounts of proficiency over the years. So we know that he's a threat with that bat in his hand. And Hunter backs up, starts backing away, and, you know, Sting keeps the pressure on. Backs him into the corner and forces Hunter to drop the sledgehammer. So, then, Sting points to the WrestleMania sign for a bit. Hunter tries to escape the corner, only get put back in it with the baseball bat. And Sting points to the WrestleMania sign again. Hunter works out that, oh no, I want to fight you at WrestleMania. And the fight is agreed. It was very well played. Sting didn't say a word. Just fucking silent menace the whole way through. <laughs> and threatening him with a weapon. So, okay. Oh, boy. Alright. So going into this, I'm admittedly losing faith in the evening. Because it's been just one disappointment after another. It's just been such a disappointing evening as far as wrestling goes. And it's a Divas match. I, I hate to say it like that, but it's the WWE. It's not an NXT Divas match, so I know this is not going to be that good. Like, a, a three-star Divas match is a rarity at this point. It... it The uh, the last time they had a, a a real good four or five star Divas fight was Paige versus AJ Lee for the Divas title when Paige had the title because they really did, they went the fucking distance with that fight it was it was great and I know that doesn't exist at this time yeah. We're just not going to see that happen. <sighs> it's going to be Nikki versus Paige tonight. And I'm going into this, and I'm already just going, oh, no. <laughs> I'm, I'm hoping it's a good match, and I'm disappointed. Because it's it doesn't make it to three-star. It's a two-star match. It, was, it just kind of went, and it was another anticlimax win where Nikki gets the roll up on Paige and holds the and holds her tights to get the pin. It just you know, you're starting to get out of the blocks and things are starting to look cool. And, you know, we could have legitimized Nikki as champion with the win, but decided not to. <sighs> God. Just 
it's so disappointing, and it's just, it, it's, it really sucks. Like, if this had been the opener match, probably wouldn't have been as bad. But by this point, you're starting to get really tired of the the win uh, the win by the power of bullshit mentality that keeps going. So we're just having that kind of day. Uh, they do not get all that impressive at all. Uh, the the moves are <sighs> Nikki does pretty much standard Nikki routine, and Paige seems to be wearing blocks again. I, you know, I, I feel bad, because, I, like, I'm watching NXT, and I watch, you know, Charlotte lost the uh, Divas Championship, and they were talking about whether she'd be heading up to the main roster or not, and I'm going, oh, God, I hope not. I, I really don't want to see her lose like that. And, and that should, I mean, think about it. If someone's like, oh, yeah, I'm in the minor leagues, I've been, you know, working at this for a good while... I'm getting called up to the Yankees. They're like, oh, no. I'm getting called up to the Majors. Oh, no. <laughs> oh, I'm so sorry. Oh, you're going to be in the Majors? Oh, God. Oh, God, man. Just... My condolences. Oh. I, I really thought it couldn't happen to you. And that is really the feeling, like, it, like I just, I want the Divas to stay the hell away from Raw, SmackDown, Main Event, just, because <laughs> I swear to Christ, they get the worst matches. They just get, they get no time, they don't get treatment with respect. Like, the N Naomi Natalia thing I mentioned earlier, they don't interact at the ring. They're down at the ringside, but they're there as arm candy. That's it. They don't help with the match. They don't distract the ref. They don't interact with each other. There's nothing. There's nothing. And it's, it gets so freaking tiresome. So. Oh, boy. Okay, so we get what should be a very, ex a really exciting match, and again, we have an anticlimax. Now, the thing is, anticlimax, as long as you keep it to one or two, is fine. It's it's really good. Like if it had just been the thing with Kid getting the roll up on the Usos, that's fine. That plays for a comeback victory by the Usos at WrestleMania. See. But because it's been every single fucking match, it's just so depressing to the point that it is pulling off of the excitement of the match. So even a match that would normally be a four ends up becoming a three because of the anti-climax we know is com we're essentially assuming is coming. It's just the way it's going to go. And we have Ambrose versus so Ambrose versus Barrett for the Intercontinental Title. It starts out with promise. Um, Ambrose is a good is really a great worker, and Barrett's good at what he does too. And it, it really looks like you know, friggin' Ambrose has this. Seriously, it really does. Like, not, oh, and, and then Barrett will pull some bullshit. The end. No, Barrett doesn't even pull any bullshit. He does try to leave. Frickin' Ambrose gets disqualified for pulling Barrett back into the ring. Like, 90 per, like every other fucking wrestler who has ever pulled anyone back into a ring. And, and it's just... I, what the fuck, guys? What is it with the refs tonight? God, first you got the one with with Goldie and Stardust, where like even Stardust can't believe he just got fucking pinned, and the same thing with with goddamn, and the same thing here now with 
it's a guys, what the hell? You know, get your shit together. You know, it's just, it, it gets very depressing. It's gotten very depressing. So, but we get an uplift, finally. Oh, thank God. As the Undertaker's music kicks, and you've got these monks in robes, and they've got torches, and there's smoke fucking everywhere, and they've got that cloud background going, and lights are down, and... Yeah, they're wheeling a slow wheeling a casket down to ringside, laid out, and so they open up the casket and Bray Wyatt sits up. <laughs> Very well played by by Bray. This was <coughs> this was fucking this was a great troll. Like this was it was an anti. It, it, this again is technically an anti climate. Now you can use this in a manner that actually still ends up working. Because we're we're all geared up. We like we yes, we're gonna see Taker. This is gonna be awesome. He's gonna respond to Bray's threat. Bray's run. Nope, it's Bray. So you can lay out, yeah, I was talking about Taker this whole time. Totally gonna do this. So Yeah, and he talks about how he's gonna claim the soul of the Undertaker at WrestleMania. And, you know, it's a, it's a good lead-up. And I think one way they might be going is because Undertaker's done 22 of these things, and this will be his 23rd, is they've got to end this at some point. Like, it's it's got to get an official, no, all right, the dead man is done, let's... <laughs> so I think what they might be going for is that Wyatt is going to be the new sort of you know, WrestleMania, the, the WrestleMania conqueror, basically. Um, and he, he has the chops to pull it off. He's got enough force of personality. He can definitely get a crowd going behind him. So it, it's, it definitely can work for him. It, it's something that could be very interesting. Um... God, I got so cynical about this shit today. It just, it was just such bullshit. Um, I said, coming into the Rusev scene, and I'm like, yep. Guess what's going to happen? Huh. It's going to be an anti-climax win. Yep. Yeah, they, they wrestle and they're setting up like this is going to be a really great match, and... But there's a key problem that they have not yet addressed with Rusev, and that's that he has no other finisher but the accolade. And against most people, this wouldn't be so much a problem because they have a tap-out point. But Cena's whole thing is never give up, which means he can't tap out, or he totally... <sighs> or that, that whole thing is done. See what I'm saying? It's just... It's like, yeah, so we know we can't tap out to the accolade. So Rusev's got him a problem. So they're battling, and you know it's going really well. Um, and this has made me worried because it's going well. And that should be the point where you realize just how shit this really is, because I literally just told you the match is going well. Oh fuck. Um, and <sighs> Cena's getting some momentum, and it's starting to look like he's getting the <sighs> the overall advantage. He's going to end up pulling this. Lana pulls distraction on the ref. By trying to step up into the ring. <sighs> And while she's doing that, Rusev kicks Cena in the balls and then kicks him in the face. Now, we have seen Cena take far, far worse beatings than this and win. Like, say, at the Royal Rumble when he fought Brock Lesnar and Seth Rollins at the same time and got beaten far harder than this and still kept kicking out. 
But yeah, apparently he got knocked the fuck out. He's developed a glass jaw for no readily apparent reason. <sighs> and this is what I'm talking about with suspension of disbelief. You know, if if you saw Batman cold cock Superman just fucking knock out blow on, on soups, it doesn't matter if you're a Batman fan or not, you're just calling rampant and utter bullshit. It's like, okay, look... Now, Bats is a great fighter. I will hand his ass that. But... <laughs> Superman can take bullets and missiles. This is not going to take his ass out. Unless you're telling me that, you know, he was wearing a kryptonite glove. This ain't gonna be a... <laughs> this ain't a thing. Um... And at this point, I'm now just officially sort of writing off everything, because I'm just like, oh god, two and a half stars for this match, because what the fuck, you know, it's it was essentially okay. Here's the thing, any one of these matches being a, being an anti-climax match would have been fine. Even having a couple of them spread out over the thing. But it's every goddamned match. Every single match has been nothing but anticlimax. And it, it makes it hard to watch. Especially because when you come down to it, this pay-per-view was, was over three hours long. Three hours of just watching anticlimax after anti-climax you can't do it you can't have that and that's a huge huge problem um and I'm now worried they're going to anti-climax this one uh The the thing is that you can't really have this fight, and here's why. It you you really can't have this fight suck, and here's why. The whole reason this fight exists is because the Royal Rumble match sucked. Most of the rest of the pay-per-view was good to the triple threat being a five-star match. It was absolutely badass. It was a beautiful fight. Made everyone involved look a hell of a lot better and like a badass. Okay, so... <clears throat> here, we run into an issue. Basically, basically, because Reigns was just flatly handed the fucking win, it's like, I, I go back to my thing of, uh, you know, if I had the Chitauri splitting their own throats... It really lowers the impact of the hero's capabilities because the if the enemies are just off killing themselves, it's you know, not exactly difficult to win, and that's exactly what happened. Uh, they took Brian out of the fight very early, and in a way that very inauspiciously just sort of pushed him off the apron, and. It's kind of like somebody bitch slapping Captain America and then him just limping off home. Like, oh, well, okay. <laughs> you wouldn't buy it? It, it, you know, it would just be like the, no, no, fuck you. <laughs> and that's exactly the crowd reaction. But they could have saved it. And this is a point I, I have ended up having to make repeatedly. It's not about Brian winning. Brian winning or losing is irrelevant, and I will tell you why that is true. 
I will explain it. At the Royal Rumble last year, in 2014, Brian fought Bray Wyatt. They got into a fight right before the Rumble. And it was a fantastic match that Brian lost. No one pitched a fit about that part. People weren't thrilled, but fuck it, Bray got a legit win, okay? That was that was some amazing shit to watch. I, I advise going back to the 2014 Royal Rumble, but just stop at the point where you have watched the Wyatt match. Um, really sad that that's, that's a fucking thing at this point. Um, so, what happens here is, basically, you've got Reigns coming in, you've got Brian coming in, and this has got to be a close-the-house match. You, you've got to... Yeah, this has to be the best shit ever, because... <laughs> Because, God damn it, if it's not, you've got no suspension of disbelief going into Mania. And no way to rekindle it in the time you've got left. Just the way it is, man. And so, I, I'm so worried they're just going to hand this to Reigns at some point in the match. Like, <laughs> Somebody's going to cheat because they think Brian's going to win, so they, you know, knock his ass out or whatever. And I'm, if they'd done it, I, I, I'd, oh god, the, the fucking rant I'd have been on. But no, they, they did what they had to do. This match was awesome. Five, this is a five star match. This is what we're talking about when you say, Oh, it was, you know, it's got to be a five-star match. Watch fucking Fastlane, Brian versus Reigns. <laughs> because this shit's amazing. Brian gets a lot of dominance in this match. Not because of his strength, but because he's a much more well-trained wrestler. He's counter submissions and technical. Which means what he starts doing is taking out fucking Reigns' legs so he can't get, so he can't, you know get leverage on him. He can't do... And then you have this moment where he's setting up for doing what's called surfing, which is he wraps it, your... He gets you flat on your chest. He wraps your, uh, your calves around his calves, grabs your arms, rolls back so that you're in the area, and he basically stretches you kind of like you're on the rack. Yeah, it's, it's an insane fucking maneuver. It's it's great because it's just it's like wow you're just stuck. You know, once you're in this, it's just you'll be out of it when Brian decides to let you out of it. <laughs> it's, it's a wear down submission move, and it fucks all your extremities. Yeah, you know, so basically they play it off. So what ends up happening is he wraps the he wraps Reigns' legs. He's getting ready to go for it. Reigns fucking pushes with his legs as hard as he can, overpowers Daniel, and throws Daniel to the ground using just the power of <laughs> the bottom half of his legs below the knee. He does not have any other point of leverage. That's it. That's all he's got. And he does it. And this is something that will show up in the match, is that Rain stops trying to break out of fucking move, like reverse anything Daniel's doing. <laughs> At a certain point, he just, yeah, I'm I'm that fucking strong. I'm just going to kick the shit out of you now. <laughs> so this goes on and on, and it reverses a lot. Uh, Rain does a good job of of. You know, selling his his hurts. <laughs> Daniel uh, Daniel is pressing that attack, not letting Reigns get any fucking momentum. <laughs> it ends up on a quick. What ends up happening is that you know, um, and something happens in this match that has never happened in a Daniel Bryan match. 
Brian has him down, hits the running knee, he gets Reigns right in the face. That's his finisher. This is it. <laughs> Reigns kicks out. On, like, 2.8. point <laughs> two point, At 2.0, I almost hit the fucking mat for the three. Four, nope. Still in it, bitch. Yeah, at a certain point, Brian's finally got this look on his face that so many of Brian's opponents have had. Of just, what the fuck? How is he not down? How is this bastard still fighting? And that's where it needed to be. Um, you basically have a thing here where there's a certain way this has to go down. And the the way it has to go down is basically what they do, which is they make this they make this conflict so good that people start pulling a yes chant on Reigns. Yeah, you know, during one of his attacks, they're calling yes chants. <laughs> he's starting to get their, you know, he's starting to get the crowd to back him on this, even in a fight with Brian. So you basically really have the situation that, you know, is the optimal situation for you. It is Reigns is showing a, a degree of power and ability that we haven't seen out of him yet. And he's he's absolutely crushing it tonight. Um, it ends up in a quick draw, and this is the great thing. Is that this is something I thought might happen was they both for their finishers are generally in a corner, and they rush their opponent. In Reigns's case, he does the spear, so he'll hit a person here, and you know. A 280 pound man slamming his shoulder into you, any football player will tell you you might need a few seconds to get up from that. Even more so, if he, that same man has been beating you about the head, shoulders, and stomach for the last 25 30 minutes. So they do what, he, what needed to happen, which is that when the momentum is mostly Daniels. But when Reigns hits a move on... But the difference is... Yeah. Um, Daniel's hitting ten moves to... Hitting five, six, seven moves to Reigns' one move. But Reigns' one move has a lot of power, momentum, and mass behind it. So he's kicking a lot of ass at this. This is... He's neutralizing the point that Daniel's getting a lot more hits in. So he's wearing Daniel down just as much, but he's just doing it by, like... Daniel kept doing arm submission holds on him, like an arm bar and stuff. And so at one point, he pops out of the arm bar and just starts barreling that same arm right into Daniel's face. Just an elbow strike to elbow strike to elbow strike. It is a good ten seconds of just really fast hits with with that arm. Like, you want this arm? Fine, here's the arm, here's the arm. Cloud, take it. Oh, what, you don't want it now? Gets him in an arm bar again. Reigns picks his scrawny ass up and power slams him into the mat. Um, so, and he just keeps going. He continues to do it to the level that you're just impressed that this is, you know, he's really actually holding his own. And it ends up ending with the, you know, Reigns, uh, Brian setting up for the running high knee again. And he always gets the yes chance going. But Reigns hits the spear first. He gets to Brian because he lays out as he runs. So he actually gets to Brian before Brian comes up off the ground, hits him with the spear, but here's the thing, there's a little bit of extra force because Daniel's running into the spear. He's not just standing still. He gets fucking flattened and gets pinned. Reigns wins. Now, we knew Reigns was going to win because he kind of had to. He had to. There was no way of him walking out of this without a victory that didn't lessen him going forward. 
So we knew this was going to be an occurrence. So post-match, now what we're waiting for is Brian's reaction. So Brian, uh, yeah, they get slowly both get up, and Brian walks over to Reigns, and he's he's talking to him. You better you better go there, and you damn well better kick his ass. And then he shakes hands with him, which is the ultimate legitimization: is you beat me. This was you won. This is your day. And that was the sign off you needed, not the Rock. I, and, and I think that's something that WWE doesn't get is that just having someone right no, you need someone like Brian who's his competitor who is his rival for this spot that acknowledges yeah you you did it you have made it you did a great job way to go now you get that belt I'm coming for your ass but for now we should, well played sir and that ends the evening. So, so we've got Tyson and Kid, uh, Tyson Kid and Cesaro are now the tag champs. No other titles changed hands. Though Dean uh, admittedly did walk off with the IC title. <laughs> Not like he won it, but he like literally just went, grabbed it, and just rolled out. It's like, are you going to fucking stop me? The ref's like, hey, hey, you can't. You're going to fucking stop me? <laughs> yeah, he taunted Barrett after the match. As, like, you think you deserve to have this? You think this is yours? Really? <laughs> then walked out with his fucking belt. It was well played. Well played, but it's still just something where I really would like to... It, you didn't even have to change any of the outcomes. It, like, Nikki winning over... <sighs> Nikki beating Paige, or whatnot. But just, they were such out-of-nowhere wins that it, it just constantly, you know, like... Just as we're really getting into this, you just called a halt to it. For no really good reason. Um, yeah, it's it just ended up being a really kind of sad night. <laughs> oh well, it's mostly. Yeah, I mean the Brian Reigns match was great and it makes up for a lot, but it, it, getting up to that point, you have no faith in this match coming into it. You're just like, oh fucking Christ. It's just, just don't be an anti-climax win just don't every other match was a lessening match yeah and what i mean by that is that it essentially made whoever lost look like they don't know what the fuck they're doing like you know stardust gets pinned on an easy roll uh no distractions nothing he just lost like not even do a finisher he, the Usos get taken out on a small package by Kid. The Ambrose gets himself disqualified for pulling someone in the, pulling his competitor who is trying to leave back into the ring, despite the fact that it has occurred religiously over the years. It, it just so much was just oh come really really guys really yeah no one noticed the fucking big show coming around the side of the ring to punch a dude in the head <laughs> I mean he's 7 foot tall and he's 450 fucking pounds how did you miss this asshole it's like you just yeah and Kane apparently knew he was coming ahead of time so he planned to have Ziggler beating the shit out of him in a corner. It was just very badly, badly, badly executed as far as the the victories go. It was just also anti-climax. They did it too much, is just basically the point here, is that there has to be a point where it, it's the law of diminishing returns. An anti-climax win can work. But the more of them you use, the more it runs down their credibility. Like, 
come on, really? Pretty much everything but the main event? Oh, really? Really? And so you start turning into the Miz. <laughs> so, anyway, that, well, I'm back on, on shift here, obviously. So, uh, tomorrow night is Raw, which I will be reviewing and going forward doing NXT. So, all right, well, thank you for tuning in. And hope to see you for the next strike reviews.